All right, let's do a little bit more. Let's go to the temporal bone. Let me look at the skull. The temporal bone is right here where the ear is, so it's put it behind the ear. Um, and when we take the bone out, we have up here, we have one that's out, and then we have a bigger one down here. So let's look at that one here. Um, we have a couple of places we have that we want to identify, a couple of landmarks. We have a squamous portion. Squamous means flat. Um, and it's a thin place that is prone to injury when we, when we you know, get hit or something or walk into something and get bruised. Then we have um, the mastoid process here in the back. And you can touch that on you. I mean, actually, it's a, it's a bone that's a little bit more porous. It's a little bit tender and we push hard on it. We can get a mastoiditis, which is an inflammation in it. Uh, that could be dangerous because it can turn into a meningitis, which is an inflammation of the inside layers um, of, of the, the skins around the brain. Also, a muscle attaches here. It's called the SCM muscle here, sternocleidomastoid muscle. And uh, we'll talk about that rather soon. So it's an attachment site for an important muscle that has a long name. But the name is easy because it has the attachment sites in the name. Then we go to the zygomatic process. That's the piece that then attaches to, if you can see it here, to the zygomatic bone, which is the cheek bone. So that handlebar sort of comes from the temporal bone. And something we can't really make out on us and touch, it's deep inside, is the styloid process, and stylus means pen, and so it's a little pen thing that sticks out. It's often missing on real skull, it breaks off easily, a plastic skull, we got a little stop there. Uh, it, this is muscle attachments. And then we have a hole here, and that's the outside ear hole, and that's an external auditory meatus. It can also be called an external acoustic meatus, as it's written up here. And we can also call it not a meatus, which is a word for a hole or for a canal. We can call it a canal. Uh, we can do that too. So it can be external acoustic canal also. And then when we take and look from above into the skull, this is the front, this is the back. And this is where the temporal bone lies inside the skull. So that makes part of the middle, medial cranial fossa. Um, and there is a portion that's sort of a ridge that actually houses the ear bones, the ear ossicles, and the balancing system of our body, the vestibular system. Mm -hmm. And that is called the petrous portion. And then lastly but not leastly, we go back to the outside, and that's where right here is called a mandibular fossa. A fossa is a shallow groove and that's where the mandible comes in. So this forms a joint. So fossa often forms joints. This is the temporal mandibular joint that is formed here by the mandibular fossa from the temporal bone's end. All right, let's go to the occipital bone so we get somewhere here. That's the back of the head bone, the green one here. There you go. Um, it has a big hole, and the big hole is where the spinal cord goes through. Actually, the brain stem goes in and out of the hole, but that's then where the spinal cord comes out and connects the brain to the rest of the body. And that hole is called the foramen magnum. Magnum means big. Foramen is a word for a hole. So that's good to learn that. When you see the word foramen, it's a hole. There's actually a lot, a lot of holes inside the skull. We're just not going to worry about most of them in here because we're just having sort of a breeze-through session with this material. Um, then we have occipital condyles, and those are right here is one. Then here is the second one on either side, and those are what holds, what connects the, the skull to the vertebral column to the first vertebra of the vertebral column, the rest of the body. So these form the joints that technically the bone that they uh, connect with, they articulate with. Articulate is a word uh, that means making a joint with. 
anything that has an ART or ARTH in it, it refers to joint. So you can kind of use that word as well and instead of joints. Um, but they make uh, articulation, a joint with the uh, C1, at, and that's known as the bone, as the atlas. And there's a ring structure, which we'll get to soon. Uh, the atlas is, is, is no, has this word from the Greek mythology of holding up the world, that atlas holds up the world, and the, our atlas holds up our world, which seems to have been thought of being the brain, the head. Um, what else do we have here? We have a bump. If you reach behind your back and go up a little bit, you probably feel a bump. And the main bump that we're worried about is known as the external occipital protuberance. Uh, also, we can call that the EOP. It's a little easier to remember that long word. Um, but it's a beautiful word. And the protuberance is something that sticks out. And this is muscle attachment. We have the trapezius muscle, for example, will attach in that area. Actually, that attaches in the nuchal line and then it just um, goes uh, medially into the EOP. Oh, look here, I got a slide on cranial fossa. Well, that's good. We have it right here. So we have three of them. We have a front. This is front. And again, this is a picture from below. You're looking, no, from above. You're looking from above down. Okay? So we have a frontal fossa, an anterior cranial fossa, a middle cranial fossa and a posterior cranial fossa. The anterior is mainly made out of the frontal bone, but we have a, a little sliver of the yellow thing here. That's the ethmoid bone, which is going to be the next bone we talk about. And then we have this grayish part, and that is actually this eth... Uh, did I say ethmoid bone? This is the sphenoid bone, not the ethmoid. But this gray sliver is the ethmoid bone. And we'll get to that after the sphenoid. Um, then the middle cranial fossa is mainly made up of the yellow, the sphenoid, and the red, which is the temporal. And then the posterior cranial fossa is for the majority made up of the occipital and then a little bit of the temporal to help with it. The parietals don't really reach down that deep. That far. And there we go. So let's do the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is a bat-shaped bone. And it's a key bone because all the other bones on the skull of the, the calvarium attach or have a connection with that bone. So that's, that's important. Um, it has a couple of features. I mean, this is important for something like craniosacral therapy uh, that we work with the joints in the skull or, uh, or, or, or when we get banged into it. I had a patient that had a hard, large amount of headaches because she was... Well, she had spousal abuse, and he smacked her right there on that thing that shifted internal a little bit. So that went across the skull. That's pretty tough stuff. Um, but we have a few landmarks. When we go in the middle of it, centrally located, there is a dip. When you look from above down, and that's called the cella turcica. That's a Turkish saddle, and that houses the pituitary gland. And then when we look from above, it's a little hard to see here, but you can see here's a little sliver here, and then below is bigger, a bigger sliver. You can see it here, uh, and, and those are the wings. Sphenoid means bat-shaped, and so those are the wings of the bat, so to speak, and the greater ones are the lower ones, the lesser ones are the ones above. And then we got sphenoid sinuses. We can't see those. Those are inside sinuses. Uh, and it, the, 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 the sphenoid also participates in the outside the lateral wall of the orbit. The asthmoid bone is an interesting one. It means sieve. Um, it's like all in here in the deep nose. You can see it. This is from below up. This is the frontal is the eye socket. So you can see it here. It's behind the nose area that's in the front here. So uh, we have a few structures. We have on top a thing that sticks up into the frontal fossa, uh, uh, cranial fossa, and that's the crista galli. I like that word. Uh, and, and then uh, around there, as you look above, from above down onto the anterior cranial fossa, you see little, little bones with holes in it, and that's known as the cribriform plate. And the holes really are the olfactory nerves entering the skull. And the olfaction is the sense of smell. And those receptors are in the upper part of the nose. Then they go through the piriform plate into the brain. 
Um, and we have turbinates, these fossa, super and middle nasal, I mean concha, sorry. And they are, they are right here in this area coming down. Here's the middle nasal concha, as you can see, uh, it uh, says so. Uh, and those help make, make tur turn the air as it enters the nose and it warms and moistens the air that then goes into the lungs. So it prepares the air to be in a good uh, status when it enters the lungs. Uh, and it's not too cold or too dry or something like that. Uh, and then we have one thin, thin piece of bone that comes in between both nasal halves. Uh, and these are the nasal cavities in here. And that's known as the perpendicular plate. All right, I think that's good enough. So let's next go to the facial bones. 